So we said half an hour for the AGM. It's just been half an hour. I declare the AGM adjourned and we are ready to start our, our program tonight. Uh, we have a very exciting program. Um, it's by Donna Evers, who is not, uh, she's on Zoom with us, but she's prepared the presentation. But Rosalind Duffus is going to give the presentation. Uh, Donna and Rosalind are both long-term members of the association. Uh, I'll just stop sharing here so I can bring it up. Um, Rosalind was uh, vice, uh, vice president of the association and... Uh, um, uh, I took over from her as that, and Donna used to do our plant sales, and she's had her garden, our garden on Simi Crescent, um, uh, has been many, many open, open gardens um, and, and plant sales there as well. So, uh, I think that's PDF. I think that's PDF. Scroll. So Donna. <laughs> All right, I don't know how many of you have been out to see the meadow. Uh, it was a project that was started because Donna had a sleepless night and she was concerned that uh, Duff couldn't cut this piece of HRM property anymore. So she approached her counselor um, in in 2019 and to see if, if it could be turned into a pollinator meadow. Um, she got approval for that and didn't know at the time that actually HRM was starting a naturalization project uh, and they had two properties and with their approval, uh, the meadow on Simi Court was added to the list. Um, so HRM put it in the budget to come in and strip the sod off this piece of land and, and put down some soil and grade it. So, let me see. So this is a little uh, sign uh, welcoming everybody to the, to the meadow and the HRM sign, let me get rid of that. The HRM sign talking about this naturalization project. So, Jamie came in and did a drone shot of the space. So this is Brenda and this is Simi Court. It's a fairly good sized piece of land and it is oriented so that the corner up here by Brenda and, and Simi Court is north. Uh, you can see that the, it's 50 feet by 40, 28, and down, down to um, uh, down to 20 feet at this point here. There is a culvert that crosses the road at this point, and then there's a ditch, a drainage ditch that runs down this way. So they came in and they stripped, stripped the uh, sod off and put down some soil. In the process of doing this. The property had prior to that had had sloped quite a bit more down to the ditch, and uh, it was leveled out a fair bit. Although it, there's still a bit of a slope, and of course they put up this silt barrier to keep um, all this soil from washing off into the ditch. Unfortunately, um, rains come and there's no plants to hold the soil, and water coming down off the road did move the soil around to a certain extent. And the other complication is along this, this ditch, there's quite a bit more height, probably, I don't know, probably about three feet of soil sitting on top of the original level. So this became a little bit of, an, of a problem here. However, um, we moved, moved forward. Now you consider that this was started in the spring of 2020 when there was no longer a possibility of having all kinds of volunteers coming to do this work. Um, Donna initially thought, I, I'm gonna have to back out of this, I can't do it. So she thought, well, maybe we postpone, can postpone it till the fall. And uh, HRM said, no, the, it's in the budget for now, it has to be done now. 
So all of a sudden there's all of this property that needs to be dealt with. And Donna girded her loins and Duff together, they started dealing with this situation. So there was a path laid out. This was seeded with clover and some grass seed. Um, whatever plants were on hand were planted. And then uh, the grass started to sprout. And in order to have a few people working there, protocols were that anybody that was there had to sign their name down and put the phone number, contact information. So we, we started planting and I'm, I'm there and Donna and Duff, Donna's uh, <laughs> in her overalls. She's always got her overalls and her boots on. So the grass started to, to sprout and plants were put in. A lot of them came out of Donna's garden. And then all of a sudden, she has a lot of gardener friends who are dividing plants and you know growing things and need a place to put them. So instead of firing them, fire them, fire, firing them into the compost or giving them away to, to people or having plant sales, which we couldn't, couldn't do that year because of COVID, the meadow became the beneficiary of all kinds of canceled plant sales. And a special thanks go out to um, the Friends of the Garden in Truro, they couldn't have their plant sale, so a lot of plants came from them. Um, the horticulture department uh, at King's Tech, Jamie brought all kinds of plants. So all of a sudden plants started to turn up. And then in order to keep uh, some of the water from washing out, coming down off the road, it thought to be a pretty good idea to put a bit of a, a, a stone barrier there just to stop the, the water. So some, some, some rocks were built, were uh, bought, some were found in the ground, you know, dig a few, few rocks out of the ground in the process. Now, this became a bit of a problem because the protocols for these naturalization projects called for no hardscaping, um, because initially they thought these naturalization, naturalization problem, uh, uh, gardens would be in a place that ultimately HRM would have to come in with a, a mower and just run over it and, and cut it down. So any hardscaping was, was uh, you know, not approved. But by this time, Duff had probably got half of a stone wall built. So then um, Colleen Jones came and did an interview for CBC and Nikki Jabor got on Facebook and talking about the problems. Everything was on hold because these were not supposed to be allowed in, the, in this particular process. But we had some rocks and Duff and some of his friends got busy trying to, trying to fix an area that had quite a steep drop off into the ditch and it was actually quite close to the road. There needed to be something done to to stop the soil from totally washing into the ditch. Yeah, I'm planting in the rain. But anyway, here are plants coming. And there was a call, there was quite a bit of a social networking thing going on. You know how the social, you know, the Facebook and all of this starts to happen. People got a little bit up in arms about, about the, the problem with, mm -hmm. with the communication between HRM and the various departments you know, highways department and the, the water department and, and the thought that maybe they'd be bringing in big machines to dig out the ditch and we've just started developing plants along this, this, this border. So um, with, between the counselor and, and, and uh, Donna's tears because she got really so frustrated one day that she did, she did um, run off <laughs> with tears. I think she made the poor guy from the, the water department feel quite guilty about it. But anyway, ultimately there was a, a, a meeting of neighbors and supporters and a bunch of very nervous HRM people came out to look at the site, to look at the, the start of the stone, stone wall, to discuss the issues with this site. And I'm happy to say that nobody got mad, nobody was verbally abusive, and the very stiff shoulders and the anxiety on the faces of the people from HRM relaxed and 
things were discussed, uh, solutions were found, um, some discussion was made about what we can do to prevent damage. Should we, should we have to come in there and, and dig out the ditch, what we can do to, to prevent a lot of damage. And I think everybody went home from that meeting very happy with, with the discussion. So you can see there's plants coming in. Now, there were plants that were donated from Briar Patch, from Ocean View, from Bloom. Truckloads, you know, carloads of plants came back and some are still being delivered to this day. Um, many, many wonderful pollinator plants. And then there's some young, um, young people who started to bring plants and uh, it became a, a, a social event. Donna could be seen out there multiple times a day planting things and the neighbors started to collect and people started to introduce themselves to each other. People who hadn't perhaps known each other you know, before on the street. Um, there's some young people planting. I don't know whether they all got, uh, got their names on the list. Here's the day that uh, Colleen came out to, to interview uh, Donna. Uh, she, she got out of her uh, overalls for the interview. And then we had some, um, some, some friends built uh, one of these little libraries, built it, installed it, and it's become a very popular item on the street. And then there was a, a bench that was down by the, by the lake. Some of the neighbors lugged, lugged the, um, the concrete bits up and put it in the meadow right at the entrance. It's well used. Uh, one, of these, one of our young people made a sign and a uh, uh, bird bath was donated. Uh, Fogarty's uh, gave a, what was it? A, a nectarine tree. That's another thing that wasn't supposed to be in the meadows, shrubs and trees, but this meadow has shrubs and trees. So this is, this is the meadow in its first year. So it's a pretty big area. Um, you can see that the plants are fairly widely spaced. There's the, the rock wall up at the top. You can see that it was partially done at this point. But you can see that it's quite a bit below the level of the road. So it wasn't going to become an issue for the plow when it came through. They weren't going to pick up any of those rocks and, and, and damage their equipment. So all of this was looked at at that meeting. And yeah, they said, yeah, this is fine. Go ahead. So here is, here's the meadow in its first year. Uh, fl flowering from, from spring right through till, till frost. Lots of liatris seeding around like crazy. Lots of rutabecchias, lots of echinaceas, um, the lobelias, the, the digitalis, turtle heads. And this is, again, all the first, the first year. And then we had, um, <clears throat> we had visitors. Some of the um, people enjoyed watching this, um, this uh, monarch come out of its cocoon. And then this was the, um, the master gardeners, thanks to Jim and his, his crew came in and, and planted uh, lots of bulbs that day. And in the winter, the, the, the bench became a, a place for some local kids to put their snowman. And then we had a young um, uh, son of, a, of one of our members. I, I think he's probably a member as well has become quite the grower of seed. The seed was uh, donated by uh, a Toronto meadow gardener and, and uh, Andrew has uh, taken on the responsibility of, of growing these things to get them through into the meadow. Well, I think they're probably planted in the meadow, many of them now. Donna says that she recognizes them now so she's not likely to weed them out. So the following spring, uh, we are donated daffodils that were put in in the fall uh, are flowering in the second year. So this is the spring of this year. Lots of alliums that came from Ruth Jackson and Jane Rostack. 
So there were lots of different bulbs. You can see the, uh, the Japonica primulas uh, have seeded themselves down that slope along with several other things that are helping hold that bank together. Um, early summer. This is, uh, this is a, that, um, what do you call it, uh, that, ja that knotweed. It's not the Japanese knotweed, but it, it's a more well-behaved one. Digitalis, lots of grasses. The Liatris again, is the Lobelia, the Echinaceas, the Hel Helen's flower, Heleniums, and, and uh, different types of daisies. Many of these things have come from the seeding that happened the fall before. So there's our fall asters, many, many different types of asters in there. Many, many gardeners have donated clumps of, from their own gardens. And lots of grasses. So they give, uh, they give some height and some uh, movement to the garden. Oh. Purple dome, very, very uh, easy to grow, lower growing aster and uh, lots of seed heads starting to come up. Part of the goal was to get this ground covered with preferred plant material so that we don't end up with lupins and uh, multiflora roses and Queen Anne's lace and dandelions taking over. And the seed, the things that the seeded the first year have, have really done a pretty good job of, of filling in some of that bare ground. To that such, especially the liatris, to such a state that if, if a new plant needs to be, find a new place, it's, it's, you don't have to feel guilty about digging out a clump of liatris and plunking in a new plant there. Now you can see there's the stone wall down here in this corner, in this corner of this picture. So above this, from this point down, this is the gravel of the side of the road. The only things that were planted along the stone wall were some low growing um, asters, and everything else is seeded from down below. One of the best things that's seeded in there is that verbena bonariensis, I think that's what it's called. Um, and it's still in great shape. Okay, lots of uh, butterflies, all kinds of butterflies in the meadow. I think the deer pass through, but I think that there's such a wide range of things to choose from that they tend not to eat everything like they do in my garden. So all here's this, uh, you know, this there's verbena, very, very favored by the by the uh, butterflies. Now these, these initially these plants were seedlings that came from from uh, friends of the garden because they couldn't have their their plant sale. There were I don't know how many flats, but probably a dozen flats. And most of those were planted down here. And when they seeded around and came back, they came back in the gravel up the hill. It, they know where they want to grow. So again, this is this is whatever's growing in the gravel. There's that little aster, Ericoides. I think it's got a new name now. The botanists like to drive us all crazy. We just get a name in our head and they go and change it. So lots of things, the mullins there. And some visitors, you know, Mother Nature toddle, toddles through. They probably have their, their nests on the other side of the road in the ditch. And um, they, they wander through. Bees, bumblebees and various plants in the garden, just dragonflies, butterflies, lots of activity in the insect world. Different, different types of butterflies. If anybody wants to, to go in there and identify, you better take your butterfly book with you. But you can see that the, that the verbena was, was well favored for all kinds of butterflies. And then, then there were some, some other little visitors. Um, the, little, the little ones really enjoyed going there and, and seeing, you know, picking a few flowers. 
the young people who, you know, came and visited on the bench. Read a book there. Talk, you know, read a book out of the library to the dog. There was quite a bit of a request for, for children's books. It was well attended, you know, books came and books went and there was quite a turnover. Little ones running up and down the pathway. The pathway was really important to have, get people into the middle, middle of the meadow without, you know, them wanting to tromp through and, you know, trample things. And I said, well, if you want to keep people in the, on the pathway, just say, you know, beware of ticks, you know, then they won't, they won't go into the garden properly. And there's a fellow that came by with his motorbike and his dog in the sidecar. The, uh, the garbage man was, was welcome to come and, and take his lunch break beside the meadow. It's interesting when you're, when you're there uh, working, the number of people that will stop and chat, you know, people that maybe you, you don't normally you know, say hello to. And then gifts are left. You know, the nice pumpkin there with, with a, a bouquet, some, some uh, little, little you know, horticultural tags there. And uh, a young fellow, a young fellow having his uh, his portrait done by a young a young lady. It's Halloween. This picture was taken by one of Donna's neighbors, and she often takes her children there and gets gets uh, very professional looking photographs in the meadow. So there's the uh, the, the bench. Uh, rest and be thankful. The, the library and and the garden getting towards the end of its season. Uh, it's it's really well worth a visit. It's interesting all season long. And you might find somebody to, to chat with that you don't know. And I think that's probably the last picture. Yeah. So I have here a list of the plants that you know can be posted if anybody wants to know. There's, there's, there's three pages, I think, of them. Um, okay, I'm gonna, shall I stop the share? Maybe Donna wants to say something from... Just thanks, Roz. Um, oh, we can't. No, we can't. Oh, okay. So I'll stop that. There's Donna. Hi, yeah. Donna. <laughs> It's um it's hard to um, take someone else's pictures and some notes and um, Donna the people on Zoom can hear you but the people here in the auditorium can't but uh, you can tell the people on Zoom whatever you'd like to tell them. Oh good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just wanted to thank Rosalind for doing that because um it's hard to take someone else's words and someone else's pictures. Oh, I hope and you're all lip readers. Take them your own. <laughs> so, thank you.